and welcome to Women in Tech Switzerland, a live young job interview showing bias. Uh, women in Tech Switzerland work to create awareness about the benefits of gender equality and also take action. I think today uh, you will be really surprised about how many questions you have actually been asked uh, during your time uh, looking for a job and it's going to be super interesting to, to see if you can spot the bias questions. Today I have with me Josephine from Trustgrad and I'm going to conduct the interview with her. She is applying for a job as a senior IT developer at a big tech company and I will start the interview as of now. Hello Josephine. Hello, you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for applying for a job. It's super nice to have you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, about myself. So um, I have studied uh, finance and uh, IT technology as my bachelor's. And I have worked in a company, a uh, big company previously for five years. So I have um, some years of experience already. And um, I also like sports. I like running. Oh, did you like running? Yes. Ah, uh, did you run marathons in the past? Um, yes, I have. <laughs> wow, that's so amazing. I'm also a runner. And oh. I'm also running a marathon. So oh. that's super good. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so nice. And what about your, what, what about, um, what did you do after uh, university and uh, after universities, I have joined some clubs that were interesting for me, um, such as for um, like communities and the tech departments. Um, so we were able to um, create different softwares, work together, share ideas, and um, meet interesting people. Oh, that's great. And was um, how did you find the environment? You know, in all these clubs. Uh, I found it quite interesting. Um, uh, I was able to kind of be myself, um, have interest with similar type of people. So that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do you, if you spend so much time working and also joining all these clubs, what does your private life look like? Do you have children? Are you married? And do you have time to have hobbies on the side? Um, I am married. Oh, but congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> but I, of course, have time for um, for uh, you know after work. If I, of course, I work hard, but um, I do uh, try to find time for um, other hobbies as well. Uh, and do you have children? Uh, no, I don't. No, not yet. Um, or I haven't thought about that yet. Uh, okay. okay. Let's continue. Um, so I'm interested in hearing uh, what accomplishment um, you have been uh, doing in your career so far, in your opinion. Um, yes, uh, I have accomplished things. I don't want to brag, but uh, I have been a, a project manager in my previous firm. We created a very interesting software for um, banks. And um, I think I was able to do a good job in leading the team. Do you have other accomplishments you can mention to me? Um, yes, I think I'm also very good in uh, working with other people. Um, I can work with different types of people, so um, very easily adaptable to different environments as well. Uh, and if you should mention their accomplishment that you were the most proud of, what should that be? Um, personal as well as on the work. Um, most proud of, I could say that uh, the last product that we developed uh, worked out very well. It, um, of course, not just me, but together with my team, uh, we developed the product and it was one of the best ones in the competition. So uh, we won second place and um, I think that was great. And in personal life, um, that the fact that I can still have hobbies and can be still in a lot of different um, clubs 
and still also do sports like running. So I'm happy to have to be able to have this balance. Running is so good. <laughs> Can you describe a typical work week for you? A typical work week. I like to wake up a bit early, um, have a nice breakfast, um, then head to work early. Um, then uh, after work, um, depending on what time I can be off, <laughs> um, I like to go for sports and maybe meet some friends afterwards. And, um, mm -hmm. and um, are you a morning person or a more like late uh, wake up person, would you say? Uh, of course, I'm a morning person. Uh -huh. um, I do like to start early and um, begin my day uh, early and um, kind of organize what I'm going to do and the agenda in a way so that my day can be organized and go on. Okay, that sounds good. So, you know, if we decide to give you this job, what would be your priorities for the first six months? Um, my priorities would be to um, first kind of get to know the whole team, um, learn about what the company has been doing so far, what were their goals, and um, I would also study the system workflows and processes and um, perhaps investigate some uh, problem areas that I can be helpful with. Um, okay, that sounds interesting. And Michael, you have been working, you know, a couple of years after mm -hmm. university. What would you say your weaknesses are in terms of working? Mm -hmm. um, one of my weaknesses, I would say, is that I can be sometimes a little bit um, impatient in wanting to accomplish things faster or in a in a more in a better way. Um, I think that would be one of them and perhaps sometimes I'm too ambitious and I would like to accomplish too much and perhaps putting too much on my plate and um, it can be a bit stressful. Uh, okay. And how do you handle stress? Um, I try to, to take care of it on my own um, but I think it is good to kind of share if there's too much happening with uh, your manager or with your other colleagues to kind of divide the work in a better way. And how do you deal with if you, uh, um, let's say you have, a, you're managing a team and you have too many tasks, how would you prioritize them? Um, like you said, I would try to actually prioritize it and um, kind of look at the most important ones um, and the ones that can be done quickest. Um, and kind of make sure that everything else is divided into the correct uh, people in the team. So um, if someone kind of getting to know the team and knowing who has what strengths, and perhaps dividing it accordingly. Um, sounds good. So another question we always uh, ask is, why do you feel you are the best candidate for the job? Um, I think because um, I'm quite good at I think what I do, if I may say so. Um, I have some years of work experience, um, so it puts me, on, I think, on the correct level according to the needs of the position. Um, I'm also very good with people, so I'm a good team player. Yeah. And, um, so do you want this job because uh, you want to develop or is it in terms of management or is it more in relation to getting to know the technology better or what is your, uh, or what do you prefer? Um, I want to have this job because um, I believe it could help me be a good leader. I think it is um, challenging and um, that is interesting for me because it's a challenge to um, be motivated and to be interesting to, um, yes, to, to take on this challenge and find um, leadership roles. Okay. 
And what kind of salary did you have in your previous jobs? And what kind of salary do you expect from this job? Um, in my previous company, um, I had uh, 100,000 uh, annually, and I was hoping that um, I could have a similar pay. Okay, that's, um, to be honest, a, a little bit below market level, but let's figure that out. Um, where do you see yourself in three to five years? Um, I see myself uh, in a role where I will be leading um, uh, 20 people, perhaps, in, um, if I may, <laughs> um, in a, a leading role where I will be yes, leading a bigger team in this company. Um, okay. And um, in terms of, um, you know, planning, uh, you know, job and private life. When are you planning to have more children? Or not more, to have children? <laughs> um, I haven't really thought about children yet, but um, I would say at the moment my career is important for me, so I would like to have that as a priority. And um, yes, I, I, haven't, I don't know yet about children, and I think I um, would have to find a way to still be able to work full time, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> uh, I will still be able to work full time, even if that was a question. And what about we at the company? We have a running club. Would you be interested in joining that running club? Yes, I think that would be um, a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we can run together. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice and have a little competition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we also test, you know, our candidates in relation to how they think. Um, did you notice when you entered the building how many light bulbs were in the building? Um, I wouldn't say that I know how many light bulbs there are, but if I would have to guess, I would say I've, I've only been to this floor, so. Um, I would assume there are maybe 60 light bulbs in this room, and there are three floors, so I would say maybe 180. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. And uh, which school did you attend uh, in relation to taking your IT um, education? Uh, I went to a university here in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and the uh, Hochschule in Luzern. Mm -hmm. And is that's, how is that uh, compared to the school in Zurich? Um, I think it is a, it is one of the top schools and um, of course the education that's great uh, great in Zurich as well but um, I believe that it has a very high high level of education. Uh, yeah, yeah. I heard so many good things about <laughs> this school so um, um, I feel confident about it. Um, <laughs> And did you take any extra courses after uh, your IT education? Um, yes, I did. I was also interested in blockchain. So I also took some courses online over some um, websites like Coursera. And um, there I was able to also learn a little bit specifically about different types of technology. So you're also interested in blockchain? Yes. I, th I think blockchain is uh, super, super interesting. Oh, so great. yeah, what, what kind of... Um, um, what kind of causes can you recommend? What kind of causes? It, uh, causes, yeah, in, in relation to blockchain. Any uh, specific? Yes, um, I think what I find really interesting is uh, data protection. Mm -hmm. So um, there are some use cases where it really lets you still be very active online, but um, protect your identity and um, only give out your information if you would like to, mm -hmm. with your consent. And um, I see that you're not Swiss. So where do you originally come from? Um, I'm originally from Armenia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. But I have uh, I can speak German, and um, I'm learning Swiss German. Ah, uh, okay. And do you think it's difficult with Swiss German? Um, it does take some time to learn, but um, 
<laughs> that's good. That's good. And um, I think, like you know, after everything you told me, like we have a the culture here is you will fit perfectly in here. I think uh, you will be very similar to the group that we are already here of you know developers. Um, but what kind of people do you like to work with the best? Um, I would say that I'm a quite open person, so I can work with different types of people. Um, but of course, it is much easier to work with people who are um, open to new ideas and, and interactions and exchanging thoughts and um, working together. Um, okay, so you don't prefer like a specific type? Um, I would say that I can work with less. Yeah, yeah, that's great to hear. Um, do you have any questions for this position? Um, I would like to know um, what is it like? Um, is there a lot of travel involved with the job? What is it like? Yes, um, as a developer, you will work on a project assigned to you. And if the client decides that they need to have the, the project done, let's say in Geneva, you will have to be in Geneva for that project. Mm -hmm. But you will be asked in advance if you want to join that sort of project. Okay, that sounds interesting. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And uh, you will have a reply within the next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> So I heard, heard, hope that you um, learned something about this uh, job interview and the next thing will be a quiz where we will test you on uh, how much barriers you could spot uh, in the job interview. So in order to get ready, you can either scan the QR code or you can join the link that we sent in Zoom. Should we just give them like mm -hmm. yeah. happy to see if they are joining? Maybe send the link in the chat. Can you ask people if they're ready or? I'll just start at one time. Just start. Okay. Let's start the quiz uh, with the first question. Um, the first question is how many of the questions in this job interview were biased? And you have 15 seconds to answer. So the, the, the possibilities are four, four of the questions were biased, eight of the questions were biased, or all of them were biased. It didn't stop. So we're starting now. And the result is actually most of them were biased. The questions. So question number two. 
is that you can play this game for this uh, question is men mention as many as possible uh, bias uh, you know when in hiring So there is, uh, there are actually a lot of bias, uh, both unconscious and conscious bias. And to name a few, um, we have the gender bias, we have beauty bias, um, we have the uh, effect uh, bias. It's like having a bad day. Uh, I just got into the office, I got a parking ticket, and then it will affect the other to you. Uh, we have the halo effect. Uh, where like when the 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 person coming in is super positive and that affects the whole uh, interview, we have the education bias. If the the person is saying they come from a really good university, that will sort of affect your opinion of them. We have the first impression bias. We have the anti-black bias, and I could go on and on and on. And I can see that you uh, uh, answered a lot of them. So the next question. The next question is how can you eliminate both conscious and unconscious bias in the recruiting process? And the one answer is standardizing your interview questions, creating an interview panel, or take away the names in the C. It's like a specific So I think the fifteen minute and fifteen seconds are up and the answers. There are two correct answers. Is the standardizing your interview questions and take away the names and pictures in the CVs. So it's not like a guarantee or avoiding gender bias that you recruit that you ask the recruiter to conduct the interview. Oh, it says I get an error message. The quiz is not open. Same here. Maybe you can um, register one more time for the kids. So right now we are waiting for um, people to join the quiz. And did you receive the? If you receive the the link, you can either use that or you can use the QR code uh, in the beginning of the quiz. Yeah. 
Okay, so I can see the first question about how many questions asked during the job interview were biased. People already answered that. And their, their answer is almost all of them were biased. Uh, and the second question. Is also um is also answered and the second question was mentioned as many types of bias as possible in 30 seconds and uh, you were pretty good and i think you mentioned around 20 or something that's super good and the third question i hope everybody is there has joined the quiz now so the third question is, how can you eliminate both conscious and unconscious bias in the recruitment process? And there are three answers. The first one is uh, you can standardize your interview questions. The second answer is ask a recruiter to conduct the interviews. And the third one is take away the names and pictures in the CV. Okay, now, now there is one writing that the quiz is not open. Please wait for the presenter to start it. And we are trying to figure out how we can start it. So the question now is question number three. How can you eliminate both conscious and unconscious bias in the recruitment process? <laughs> yeah, I can see that they're, they're pretty good. Um, actually, the more wrong answer was asking recruiters to conduct the interview because it's not, uh, it's not a guarantee that they will do it uh, in an entire friendly way. Next question is how um, how much is how much in percentage is employee turnover related to bad hiring decisions? And the answers are forty percent, sixty, or eighty percent. And the right answer is actually actually 80%. Uh, companies say um, lost turnover in relation to bad hiring is actually 80% and it's super uh, scary, but that's actually the true and it's a study conducted by Harvard Business Review. Next question. And M is still leading. So the next question is, how much bias are there against women in the sandwich? Are, are almost 70% uh, bias against women? Uh, is it 80 or 90%? Yeah, and uh, the correct answer is actually 90%. It's super shocking. And um, it's a, a, an article in Guardian that uh, disclosed that the bias against women is actually 90%. Next question. The second last question is, um, how much do companies leading within diversity and inclusion perform better than their market average in terms of profit? 
profitability. And yeah, everyone was correct. And it is a, a so much as 25 to 36% that you benefit from, from being uh, working with diversity and inclusion in the company. We have the same question, and that's the last question, and it's in relation to innovation. How much more innovation do you get if you have a focus on diversity and inclusion at the company? And the correct answer is actually 20%, but let's work for that it increases to 30%. Thank you so much. It was the last question of Chris. Thank you so much to Josephine. Uh, the next thing that will happen is that I um, have invited Barbara Fry. She is the CEO and founder of Rethink Diversity. And she's going to tell me what I did wrong in this job interview. And she will also tell us about behavioral science and how we can uh, use that in terms of gender equality. Gender Thank you. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm super excited to hear all the mistakes I made uh, when I interviewed this. So bring it on. Well, <laughs> I can start with the general setup that you chose for this interview, which is the let's say a conversational style, which is nice because people get used, but I think. Uh, in an interview, you're trying to get better understanding of the skills of the people and how they relate to the job company and how good is this person in terms of fit for the skills. So that is the first general observation. Um, for instance, um, your, one of your first questions was about uh, the running club. I think I was asking the candidate if she was a runner. And you, you found out that she was, and you are too, a runner. So what happens that you thought, oh, she was actually nice. I, that photographer that I like. So that means you are favorably inclined towards her because she is a runner. And clearly that has no relation at all with the fact is she good for the position that she has that is a valid skill. And uh, asking these kind of questions is, is really misleading very often. It takes you away from focusing on the skills and then the role and on the position that you have to fill. So it is important to, to keep these kind of uh, biases uh, at, uh, in check so that they don't overrule more objective um, facts that you want to find out about your plan. Then you had uh, obviously what was completely no go were the questions about children, family life. Uh, these are, I think, for any person you interview, be it a man or a woman, it is out, it's not correct. I think a lot of people in HR know that, of course, and I think also most of them don't do that anymore. I would say still that people who are not really professional uh, recruiters and I'm thinking of people who hire people for their team, they might still today ask these questions in interviews in the Middle East. And clearly, um, it's not appropriate. And I think as a, as a woman, if you get this kind of question, uh, do you plan on having a family? It's a tricky one to answer, right? Yeah. Because it, yeah. it puts you in an awkward position, right? What do, what do I say? I don't want to come uh, uh, across as being abrasive because I say, well, this is the prior question is none of your business, which it actually is, yeah. right? <laughs> so thinking of how do I answer that, it is probably just to find a way around it and say politely, um, the way I live my life as an individual, I think um, is really not linked to this position. Um, I think we should talk about skills that I bring to the table. Yeah. So it's just try to circumvent it somehow, but clearly the mistake is not on your side, right? It's Question that's wrong in the first place. So, can you say that if you are at a job interview and the recruiter or the HR person is trying?
trying to uh, drag it into the more private um, area, you can actually, it's a good tip, I think you can say, let, let's focus on the skills that I need for the job. Yeah, I think you just, you know, if you don't want to be confrontational, yeah, right, you, you, you can just say, I would rather talk about my skills and, uh, and, and my abilities that I bring for this role. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it can't kind of work every time, right? It depends on yeah. the person, <laughs> but as a general uh, rule, that could work, yeah. Then the, one of the questions you ask is a very classic opening uh, remark. Tell me about yourself, right? And basically, it's, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a white page that you can fill, right? And, and there are a lot of people who are probably excellent at this, and, and you can show and, and shine in this question. But clearly also it is, something that disfavors a lot of people. For instance, people are just shy or introverts. They will not be speaking like this about themselves. Or people from different cultural backgrounds, like um, a lot of Asian cultures, it's not appropriate to talk about you and brag and, and, and tell an interviewer how, how great you are. It's just not something that comes easily. Whereas in other cultures, it's something that actually kids learn from a very young age, for them it's, it's it's relatively easy. So it really is a kind of question that is um, probably intended to give the candidate an opportunity to show what she, he or she can do, but actually it's not on an equal footing for everybody. So we have to be careful with this question. That was uh, actually one of the questions I was surprised that it was I, I was not aware of it before we made this job interview. But yeah, super interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of play uh, at play in this question, right? A lot of different biases actually yeah. are taking. And, and actually, in this kind of open question, you might also be more inclined to judge a woman or an, a more harshly, probably, because it's so broad, right? So what are the criteria to judge the answer as a good, good yeah. answer? It's completely yeah. up to the person and subjective, highly subjective. Yeah. yeah. Then you had also quite uh, a lot of questions which are again going uh, uh, around topics that are really not skills related, right? It's, it's, it's work environment, but yeah, yes, it's kind of work related. But then again, there's a lot of personal things that came that came that come in here that are totally not related to the skills. And I think if you want to find out working styles of a person, like how does a person go go about problem solving, yeah. you should rather do um, a work sample test. Yeah. Right. Think of what's a typical task this person will have to solve mm -hmm. or do on a regular basis and try to think of um, almost like a mini case. Yeah. Because that's when you can see how is this person actually going about solving the problem? How um, is she going to plan her action? How is she going to involve other uh, teams. So with a work sample or mini case, you get much more out of um, the person in terms of what are the skills that he or she brings that actually help in this current role. And it's really a real test, right? It's not just what the person tells you about past accomplishments. You have no idea what's right about this. You could not, they can tell you anything, right? Mm. And if you prepare, prepare for a job interview yourself, obviously you think about what you're going to say, right? Yeah. So it's all rehearsed, and it, it and that is fair enough from the side of candidates, but clearly for the organization who wants to make sure to select the best person, mm -hmm. it's not a good uh, question to ask. It's just too vague. It's not specific enough. Okay. So I'm going to my notes here because there's, some, there's so there was so much happening, right? <laughs> In this interview, that, that we, I was like scratching my head. <laughs> but clearly, um, you know, the, the question about, we had, I think we had a question about the, um, the future, right? Future, where do you, where see, you see yourself in three to five years? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that again, you know, it's, it's a tricky one in the sense that when you get this question, what do you say? Yeah. It's so hard to, you, you start to think as a candidate, what's, what should I say, right? Yeah, yeah. So that it, it's seen as a good answer. Yeah. And that leaves the candidate in a very uncertain field. And then you actually also realize 
what does it have to do with the skills and discipline position? Because clearly, I think as an organization, we want to get really good. And we want to get people who want to grow, who want to develop. But I think with these questions, it's probably not the best way to, to try to find it out. Mm -hmm. There are better questions, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I think also, like, I have a conversation like ages ago, and five years is such a long time out in the future. So who knows what, you know, like the answer is so, like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's super vague. I mean, yeah, particularly in that nowadays where change is so fast, right? Yeah. I mean, even three years out seems to be like, who knows what the world will be like. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What about the question today where I asked you Tina, about the weaknesses? Is that okay. a good or bad question? <laughs> well, again, this is a question that is uh, often asked. And as a candidate, you know that you're going to be asked probably at some point, and then you prepare. You prepare and say, what is a good weakness? <laughs> and actually, I think what Josephine said about a typical weakness, a lot of people say, I'm yeah. too ambitious, I'm impatient, so thinking that actually leads the interviewer to think, oh, she's driven, she wants to get good results, which is clearly good uh, personality traits, but at the same time, you know that that's, that's just not the full truth. I mean, yeah. there, there must be other weaknesses, and, Clearly, um, again, also some bias in here, um, depending on the culture a person is coming from, there are also a different uh, light on what is actually weakness. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And also, I was thinking about the question where I said, like, where I, I wanted her to feel welcome in our group of people because she was kind of the same. That's also a world, right? That well, she was not, you know, if she told me something, but were different, and then you know, exactly. I mean, for her, this question was like, okay, um, they expect you to really be like them, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, what what freedom do I have for myself? Maybe because in this interview, I was trying to please, right? I was trying to fit what they expected, and and. What is the culture in the organization? How much do they let people come to work as they are, so to speak, right? And be who they are, and, and at the same time, because they feel at ease in the culture where people see who they are, they will also be more productive in the way they So that really could put people off, right? Yeah. And say, well, I'm not sure actually when they want to work there, they will be very strict to the culture in a way because I, you have to fit in. not an indicator of fit for the role and of um, skills, 
for the role that we're looking for. So oftentimes it puts people a bit, um, you know, it, it scares them a little bit. And I don't think you want to have this in an in a, in a interview. What I earlier said, it's it's not a fireside chat, it's not a conversation like with a friend. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you want people to be at ease. You know, it's 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 conversation which has to be structured, and I would like to say a little bit about, about this later on. But but clearly, you don't want to feel people unnecessarily stressed, and this kind of question might actually be that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Do you have? Any more comments? Yes. To, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of points yeah. about um, structured interviews, right? I mean, it's uh, a lot. A lot of organizations are doing this, particularly I think the larger ones with the fleshed out HR organizations. The structured interview, I think, is the first. Uh, if you take one thing away from from what I say today, it's never conduct um, an unstructured interview. It's like uh, like you have a coffee with the person and then after this you decide to hire this person. An unstructured interview is um, opening up all kinds of unconscious bias to come in and it's too much based on likability. Do I like this person? Do yeah. I get along? And so also conversational interviews it's super hard to compare one to the other mm -hmm. because you have not asked everybody the same question. Yeah. And most likely also you will, will not have asked a lot of skill related questions. Mm -hmm. You might have asked about what did you do in the past, what did you like, da, 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 da. just more kind of informal questions, but you will probably won't have dug deeper into real skills. Mm -hmm. So if you have a structured interview, that means you decide on all the questions ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you have the questions, make, uh, make sure that you actually um, touch upon the skills that you need for this position. And then you make sure that you ask all the candidates the same question in the same order. You decide ahead of time how much, how you rank the questions, what's the core, what does good look like. Mm -hmm. Agree on the hiring team before you start the interview. So it makes it easier afterwards to score. And compare candidates really based on this interview and um can i ask in relation to the score uh, let's uh, just so i also get it. um so let's say you have uh, your questions which are already made and it's about an uh, it developer position and one of the questions uh, is um how well do you how well do you work with a uh, project and would you then score it from one to five, or how do you do it? I think just this question is not specific enough, right? Okay, okay. so yeah, if okay. you have a non biased question, well, you know, this is a um, non biased question. I mean, yes, try, let's try for each role, obviously, the hiring manager yeah. and, and the HR person have to sit together and say, okay. What are the skills you need, yeah. and what are what are the questions that we can ask? And yeah. obviously, HR has a lot of standard questions, which ideally are bias-free <laughs> or not leading to bias. But I think I cannot give you like an ultimate answer. What is the right question for the skills? But I think you have to make sure that. And yeah, yeah, I think my question is in how do you rate the answer? Uh -huh. Yeah, that was at the scale. Yeah. Well, I think. Sitting together with, uh, before you start the interview, so you want to finalize your questions, you say, okay, five is the best, right? Yeah. What does five look like? Yeah. What has to be in this answer? Yeah. So you decide, okay, um, this and this and this element has to be in the answer. So it, it requires quite some preparation oh. actually before the interview, right? Yeah. It's clearly more work, I think, yeah. in some ways that you have to put into those questions. Yeah. And, and you have to make sure they fit the role, really that you get out um, these questions and an assessment of the people, right? Okay. And yeah, ideally you complement it with other tools, like as I mentioned, work samples, case studies are, yeah. are yeah. excellent predictors because in the end it, it's the game of, that we're playing here is finding out who is the best fit, who is the best person, right? So yeah. it's about what is really predictable of success. Mm -hmm. Is it the interview? Is it the case study? Is it a work sample? Are uh, is it these things combined? Mm -hmm. So at this stage in the hiring process, it's completely crucial. 
and you have to see how you use the different tools smart tools yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Should we continue with your questions? There is a question. Yes, there is a question in the audience. Um, how do you go about positive discrimination? For example, there are um, there are three or four male candidates in the application pool who fit the job description better, but your team is already uh, predominantly male. Is there a fair, pragmatic way of going about this? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Clearly here we talk about the problem of gender imbalance in an organization and obviously this organization has realized, oh, we, we lack female perspective, we lack female talent. So I assume this organization has um, a strategy of saying we would like to have more women on our teams. Now, if I understand the question correctly, if there are five, four men and one woman, woman and they're all equally qualified, all of them, see the, the men were a little bit better, 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 better than, than the women. Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is really nice, right? <laughs> this question. I think it speaks to the question of fairness, which is, I think, very important in, in this. And I understand actually the reaction of, of, of men who have a problem with women being promoted favorably. But I think in the end, what we, we have to consider a couple of things here. I think what plays into this question is. I think personally, I always favor hiring the best. You know, even if it's if if, if the women uh, are not as good as the men in this example, I would take the men, right? I think at the same time, if that's the case, and an organization really struggles with finding female candidates that fit the bill, there's also a question that has to be asked, and there are a number of, of ways to answer this or go about this. First of all, how are we actually attracting candidates? How good are we in, 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 in actually going and finding women? How um, unbiased are our job descriptions? What's the language we're using in the wording when we, when we make postings about job openings? That's one thing. And then also when we have, um, when we discuss the skills uh, and the needs for a position, maybe we should also it's worth by looking at what are those skills? Are we actually really de-biased and open in these skills and, and requirements that we have for this position? Maybe we are too strict. Maybe we're trying to have um, hire too many mini me's, people who are similar to the model, the ideal candidate, or people working in this team that we already have. So maybe it's worth by looking at what's happening up to the point where we have a shortlist. Of, of five people and we don't have enough women. But also you mentioned that the, the men seem more qualified, but what is the qualifications for the job? Because is it in relation to, you need to have a different kind of skills that, and you know, the men can be more qualified in terms of they've been coding more or they have been uh, doing more project management, but this, uh, Woman might have been doing more selling, so it's also you know what kind of skill set is required because it's not only about I got the highest grade uh, at the university. Yeah, and it's not only skill, it's also background and thinking, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because a lot of times um, teams are too um, homogenous in their way of thinking, in their way of problem solving, right? So. Clearly, if you want more diversity on your teams and in your organization, you also have to think, how can we attract more people who are different from us? Mm -hmm. And how do we actually rate these people when they come in, right? Because uh, initially, they, they're not like us. Right? <laughs> so even if you have the good intention of yeah. being more diverse, in the practice of every day, we encounter all of these unconscious biases that we all have mm -hmm. that are part of us. Yeah, they are part of being human. And uh, the question is really how do we work around those unconscious biases? And again, um, structured interviews is definitely one thing to do that will help you have less of these unconscious biases creeping in. And generally speaking, looking at talent management in your organization, looking at the processes that you have in place or hiring or 
assessment, evaluations, and promotions. There's so much bias in these decisions. And a lot of people actually take bias decisions without wanting to do so, right? It's, it's because this is how, the way our brain is structured and it's hard to overcome these things. And, and women have biases against women almost in the same way as men have. It's just what we do. I don't think that was that. Yeah, true. So yeah, I think this is also Hope just- you got your answer. <laughs> so, yeah. Should we continue with your presentation? Um, or do you have more comments? Um, I think for the interview, I I think I covered you covered already quite a lot. I don't know if you are interested in knowing a little bit about the science uh, behind uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, unconscious bias. I mean, yeah. unconscious bias clearly is known to people. There's a lot of talk about it, and I could tell you a little bit about um, a little bit about the science and also how it plays into hiring decisions. Um, I'm not sure at this point if we see the people uh, see the slides or they do. Okay. So I'm just going to walk you very briefly through um, the science behind understanding unconscious bias in talent management. Um, I think I need to use the pointer, right? So. Oh, works. <laughs> so basically, I mentioned it before, it's about how our brain is wired, how we uh, think and decide depending on the context we are in. Now we can move the slide with that. Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, very simply speaking, most of the things we do in life start with an intention and end up with an action. So we intend uh, a lot of things throughout the day from brushing our teeth, which we do unconsciously almost, like automatically to going to the gym, um, to uh, working on a big project and finishing it in by the evening. So we have this challenge to go from intention to action. And what is often standing in the way in us getting to action in the way we actually intended is the way our brain is functioning the way we think. As I mentioned before, a lot is linked to the wiring of our brain. So our brain has a certain um, memory of experiences that we've had in the past. And also it is very dependent on the context we find ourselves in currently, like, um, or how I do get the information, where do I do something, how is it presented? Wiring, as I mentioned, could be earlier experiences. It's actually everything we have seen as children, the way we grew up, uh, the roles our mothers and dads had, politicians, uh, how I was educated, how I experienced uh, math at school, was I feeling uh, as a girl uh, being treated differently from boys at math, and maybe boys feel they, they did not get the fair treatment in, in language classes. So all these things that we have experienced, they, they mark our brains, you know, they, 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 there's a trait of Right. And also stereotypes form in our brain. And clearly we also have emotion linked to a certain task, getting from A to B. It's sometimes a happy emotion or a negative emotion. This also impacts if we get from A to B. And as I mentioned, context, like what's the situation we find ourselves in? How easy is it to do what I'm setting out myself to do? Um, who benefits from it, who is asking me to do so, or who is the sender of information. So all these things play into this equation from A to B. And I think like a super simple example is like if you were in, in high school with a person you didn't like, you don't like the name. <laughs> so, and if you meet a person later in your life with the same name, it's sort of who are you? Absolutely. <laughs> That's a brilliant yeah. example. Yeah. Of it's just you you actually know people are aware of that, right? Yeah. That they have this negative or yeah. positive connotation to a name. That's yeah. that's a, a, a bias that is yeah. unconscious, but people notice it, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. But it's true, it's hard to get rid of that, right? It's super hard, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, um, very simply speaking, we talk about in behavioral science, behavioral economics of system one and system two thinking, and this terms. These terms have been coined by Daniel Thomas, who 
wrote the book Thinking Fast and Slow. I'm sure many of you have heard of it and maybe read it. It was a breakthrough book that actually made uh, decades of research in behavioral science, in psychology, neuroscience, behavioral uh, uh, economics accessible to lay people. So uh, if you have time, I recommend you read it. And system one and system two really distinguishes between two ways we go about making decisions. So system one is really a fast, automatic, effortless way of thinking. It's intuitive. It, we, we don't have to think hard. We, we, we just know it's our gut, right? And it's two times two effortless. And it's decisions that help us in, in most decisions throughout the day, we use system one and we're totally fine using it. Thank God we have system one. <laughs> but we also have system two, which we need when we have to think hard, get to scratch our heads and say, oh, how much is 28 times 70? We really realize we are thinking it's almost painful, right? <laughs> it's analytical, it's slow, it's deliberate. So we use that much less than system one. So when we think of um, decisions we make, um, about people in talent manager, for instance, it's, it's clear that if you use system one, you have a more a higher likelihood of being um, not objective, of having a lot of biases in your judgment, because intuition and system one, they, you cannot fight against these bias. They're just, they're, 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 the neurons are firing in your brain. It's just happening and as the term says, it's unconscious a lot of times. So what can we do?